Energy 808, the cutting edge. Here we are on a given Monday morning on ThinkTech, and we have on the phone from uh, Hilo, Hawaii, we have Marco Mangelsdorf for ProVision Solar. Welcome back to your show, Marco. Well, thank you, Jay. In the words of our dear friend, dear friend, Mr. Rogers, it's a wonderful day in my neighborhood whenever I get to spend time with my neighbor, Jay Fidel. So always a pleasure. Thanks so much. <laughs> Keep thinking those thoughts. The, the next extreme weather is on the way. And that will not be a beautiful day. Um, anyway, uh, so Marco, um, we're going to talk today about Molokai, the friendly island, because you spend plenty of time there. You have projects there. We're calling this show Focus on the Friendly Island. And there are new developments from Maui Electric on Molokai, and you are equipped to tell us about them. So why don't you start now, and we'll go through whatever is going on in Molokai in terms of uh, renewable energy. Sure. It's always a, a great pleasure for me to be able to talk about an island that is so near and dear to my heart. And just as I probably told you, and I'll repeat myself, I first visited that island with my pops back uh, more than 50 years ago when we went fishing. He took me fishing on the east end of the island. We went and did uh, shore casting and also reef walking and some of the most wonderful, loving memories I'll ever have of him. And it really planted the seed seeds for me to feel a connection to that island very early on. And I've been very fortunate to have had a chance to kind of nurture those seeds which have now blossomed and uh, done a number of projects uh, on Molokai solar, electric rooftop solar, uh, going back 12, 13 years. So, yeah, I recently spent a week there, came back last week, and I thought, you know, it would be a good idea to give people an update, because I, I see Molokai as having the potential to be the most renewable energy, uh, energized island, so to speak, in the Hawaii island chain, I think, over the next several years. The, there will be kind of a race between Molokai and Kauai in terms of which island will be able to get to 60, 70, 80 percent renewable. Uh, and they will; those two will be far ahead of uh, Maui, proper uh, Oahu, and the Big Island. So the interesting timing is, uh, and unfortunately I was not able to meet this community meeting last Wednesday, but the folks at Half Moon Venture which uh, started a company called Molokai New Energy Partners, and they have received uh, public utilities approval last year to move forward with the what will be the first utility scale TV project plus storage on Maui, excuse me, Molokai, uh, in the months and, and year ahead, which will uh, play a very big part in moving that island uh, to a much higher level of uh, renewable penetration. So I came up with a number of illustrative slide, so maybe if we could get the first uh, graphic there on the screen. Yeah, one, uh, thing, one kind of, thing though, Marco, is that uh, I, I, I paid a trip to uh, Molokai a year, year and a half ago, and I found that there was uh, plenty of fossil fuel going on. There's, a, there's an old-fashioned, um, you know, uh, diesel plant there, uh, which has been there for many years, and there's also a, a biomass plant that I saw that was impressive from the point of view of biomass. Um, but I didn't, I didn't see a lot of renewables on that trip. So uh, how far down the pike are we right now? Well, uh, I'm happy to get into that. And I, if we could maybe get the first slide there, that'll help to kind of illustrate so we can go from the macro to, to, the, to the macro to the micro. So I see the slide there now. So thanks, thanks for posting that. Mm -hmm. So let's kind of do a little bit of, um, oh, the slide's gone now, a little bit of uh, a kind of overview first. and. If you look at the total power generation uh, potential on uh, Molokai, uh, there is a total of 12 megawatts uh, peak capacity that that plant has. And, and by the way, there's only one and only one power plant, uh, Miko power plant on the island. So that differentiates Molokai from, from the other islands which have multiple power plants spread out across the service territory. So Molokai, there's just one. Uh, so there's 12 megawatts uh, peak uh, capacity in terms of output. Now that said, uh, Molokai peak demand is substantially less than peak capacity, which is usually the, the case or always the case. And uh, that is a peak demand of approximately five and a half megawatts. Now this particular slide is several years old, so uh, the, the current figures may be a bit different, but not tangibly different. So let's go to the uh, to the next slide when you get a chance, please. 
So is that's loading up again. Uh, let's just kind of keep the numbers straight here. So 12 megawatts of generation capacity, max capacity on Molokai, a demand peak of 5.5 megawatts, and again, a megawatt being a million watts. And what is being produced now already in terms of renewable energy, this is according to uh, Hawaiian Electric's own data. So as of a couple weeks ago, the total solar capacity in, in terms of approved rooftop solar systems or and or existing PV systems on Molokai was 2.85 megawatts, 2.85 megawatts, which is uh, a substantial percentage, as you can do the math, of, of the peak demand of 5.5 megawatts. So to answer your question, there is already on that small island a substantial amount of rooftop solar, mm -hmm. and in fact, that has created uh, significant challenges for, for Maui Electric over the past several years in terms of during a nice uh, sunny day across the island from east to west, north to north, south, uh, since typically demand for electricity is lower kind of in the midday and early afternoon hours because people aren't home and so forth, uh, there has been surplus of solar power, and the question has been what to do with that surplus of solar power. And relatively recently, the folks at Maui Electric came up with uh, essentially a load bank, uh, which is uh, a place to effectively kind of dump the surplus solar power when there ain't nowhere for it to be used. And unfortunately, it's not, it's not a battery, so it's not something you can charge up during the day and discharge, but it at least allows and has allowed the folks at Miko to clear up the net energy metering queue, which uh, you have people who were waiting waiting to go NEM, and that for, you know, this program ended back in 2015, but waiting to install their NEM system for the past several years. And to Miko's great credit, they were able to get creative and find a way to accept all those long waiting NEM customers, so. Yeah, so I've seen that. In fact, in fact, we included that on our tour. Uh, it's, it's right at the, um, at the, uh, at the uh, diesel plant uh, just across the way in a kind of white container, right? right next to the uh, Maui Electric um, control room, control building, uh, right there in um, Kanakakai, am I right? No, you're not, Jay, and uh, what you are referring to is a battery, lithium uh, titanate battery by Alternano, Alternano, that was installed several years ago as part of an HNEA grant and DOD uh, money, if I'm not mistaken, and that is a battery bank there in that container which you are referencing, which is different than the capacitor bank, which is much more recent. So mm. that battery bank, uh, which again, Miko essentially got for free, uh, that allowed for uh, greater stability to be provided to that island grid and also kind of a, a collateral benefit, uh, although it wasn't designed to do this, uh, the collateral benefit is that it allowed some of that surplus solar power produced during the day to be uh, absorbed by that lithium titanate battery. So, um, this so is, both uh, of those facilities are working now. Yes. Good. Yes. So that means there's so, like additional capacity for for solar development then. Correct. Correct. And uh, maybe now is a good time to uh, go ahead and start the slide deck which uh, the folks at uh, the uh, Molokai New Energy Partners were able to uh, present before the, the Maui, excuse me, the Molokai community uh, last Wednesday at a community meeting. So I, I give my, my gratitude and thanks to the folks at MNEP for providing me with, uh, with the slide deck, which we're going to take a look at now. Okay, it's on, it's on the screen. Okay. So what's really exciting about uh, this particular project uh, is that this is going to be, as I mentioned before, the first utility scale solar plus storage uh, on, on the island of Molokai. And it is, it is a, a fairly big, uh, big project, especially comparatively speaking to the small grid size. So let's go ahead to the, uh, to the next uh, slide. You get a chance, please. And as that comes up, I'll give you a few details of this project. So again, keep in mind uh, some of the numbers I stated before, which were uh, peak demand on the island of roughly five and a half megawatts, okay? Now this solar array 
will have a DC rating, what's known as the standard test condition or SDC DC rating, of 7.5 megawatts. We have names on the screen of the principals of the company. I, I'm not sure that's the slide you want. Why don't we go to the next yeah, slide? We can, yeah, we can, we can continue on uh, to, to the next slide after that. Uh, Oh, which is uh, slide number three, which says major events there. Yes, right. Uh, so, uh, kind of lost my train of thought a little bit there. But again, keep in mind the DC, the the, the array size of this this new utility scale array is seven and a half megawatts, and the actual output when you have the, uh, the figure in the inefficiencies and the DC to AC conversion is going to be somewhere over five megawatts. So. We're talking five megawatts from a new solar power plant that will be feeding into a grid that has a 5.5 megawatt peak demand that already has 2.85 megawatts of rooftop solar. Now, I'm not asking you to do the math, but the math is pretty easy to calculate, which is that there is more and more and more and more solar going in to this island grid, and the question is, Gee, how can the grid take that? Uh, it has to go somewhere. And one of the key components of this project from Molokai New Energy Partners is not only uh, a seven and a half megawatt solar array, but also uh, 15 megawatt hours of uh, state-of-the-art brand new Tesla Megapack uh, battery storage. Um, okay, so, so this gives uh, kind of a quick overview of this particular project timeline. Uh, so they received P, uh, PUC approval back in July 18, so more than a year ago, and uh, there was uh, they were trying to incentivize uh, or trying to reduce the cost of the project to ultimately benefit the consumer by using various tax credits. So it noted that uh, the so-called new market tax credits were no longer available due to some type of uh, reclassification of, of uh, Maui County which effectively kind of brought up apparently the income level of Molokai. So the new market tax credits are no longer available, but uh, the uh, existing or still existing tax credits, state and federal, the federal investment tax credit 30% and also state tax credit is still available. So let's move on to, to slide number four there, 2019 major events. Okay, we're on that now. Okay. Uh, so, the, one of the big parts of kind of this the presentation of last week, or big news, was that Tesla has now taken over for uh, the previous company, S&C. So, Tesla is now, as I understand it, the general contractor of record, and they will be working with uh, other contractors to, to put this into effect. And the good news, I think, about that, you know, full disclosure, I'm a Tesla certified installer, so I have a... Uh, uh, you know, propensity to be favorable towards Tesla, but they have shown their creds uh, over the past years in terms of being able to install uh, substantial size utility scale solar plus storage on the island of Kauai. So I think it's a very good thing that uh, they are able to, uh, to step in and kind of take over here uh, with a, a target operation date of approximately a year that may be pushed out some, but uh, probably not too much later. So we can go to the, the next slide uh, that describes the Tesla system. Yeah, we're on the next slide now. Okay. So what is important to note here again is that when you're dealing with uh, a system the size of seven and a half megawatts feeding into a relatively small grid that already has a whole bunch of solar that the battery storage has to be substantial in terms of, of volume. So the, the 15 megawatt hours uh, mm -hmm. apparently was the same storage they were going to have when the PPA was approved by the commission last year, providing uh, Mika with the, the same advanced features as previously planned for grid stability, uh, compatible with the new Phase 2 RFP issued on August 9th. Uh, that's the, the second round that Hawaiian Electric is doing for uh, storage, PV plus storage across its service territories, and uh, Tesla as well. Existing plant microgrid operations throughout Hawaii for added reliability and service. That simply means that um, they already have a strong presence here in the state and uh, will be around to, to be able to take care of things on an as-needed basis. So we can go to the next. Hey, Marco, uh, we're going to take a short break.
That's Marco okay. Mangelsdorf from ProVision Solar in Hilo. Uh, I'm Jay Fidel. This is ThinkTech and uh, Energy 808, The Cutting Edge. We'll be right back after this short break. Aloha. My name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of ThinkTech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. My program airs every other Monday at 1 o'clock on ThinkTech Hawaii. Most of my programs deal with my own life and law experience. Recently, I interviewed Alex Jempel, who I have known for over 30 years, about his voyage across the sea as a lawyer from Tokyo to Hawaii. Those are the type of stories that I like to bring and like to talk about. Human stories about law and life. Aloha. Hey, aloha, everyone, and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studio. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii. We air here every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii time, trying to bring you issues about security that you may not know, issues that can protect your family, protect yourself, protect our community, protect our, our companies, the folks we work with. Uh, please join us and uh, hope you can. Um, Maybe get a little different perspective on how to live a little safer. Aloha. Okay, Energy 808, the cutting edge here on a Monday. A Monday, I guess it's the Monday morning. With Marco Mangelsdorf from ProVision Solar and Hilo joining us by phone. Uh, and talking about Molokai, the friendly island, talking about some of the really big projects that are happening there. Uh, that are likely to make it, uh, well, at least put it in competition for the number one uh, island that reaches 100% renewables. So uh, we're talking about Tesla specifically. And Marco, you wanted to go to your next slide on, on Tesla. Yeah, just to show kind of conceptually what this new uh, Tesla, what they call Megapack, uh, for utility scale storage look like, looks like. It's essentially, from what I can tell, this, the size of a 40, if not 45 foot container with uh, power electronics and battery storage uh, within the container, which can essentially be outfitted at a factory uh, and brought over as you would ship over any container and uh, plop, plop it in place and go ahead, hook it up, wire it up, and commission it uh, in a pretty, pretty fairly quick fashion. So I'm not really <laughs> sure at this point uh, how many megawatt hours or kilowatt hours fit in one container, but I got to believe that uh, uh, at least a megawatt hour probably fits in, in a container or in that mega pack uh, container of, of battery storage. So, again, kind of the big takeaway here is that when you are putting more and more solar and hooking it up to the grid, you are trying to, on some level, force feed more and more electricity, more power input into a grid that has, of course, a finite ability to be able to, to accept more, more power. And as I've been telling people for, for years, you, you cannot put an infinite amount of power into a finite grid. Uh, otherwise, you run into problems uh, in terms of grid stability and the quality of electricity. So having adequate storage, especially in the case of a small island like we have here with one, one power plant, is absolutely critical in terms of being able to manage the surplus of solar power effectively from rooftops, from utility scale solar, which will be going in from uh, the Molokai New Energy Partners folks, and also uh, one of the early uh, community-based renewable energy, or CBRE, projects that, would, that was approved by the commission is uh, another 250 kilowatts of solar without storage, which will be going in in relatively clo close proximity geographically to that one and only power plant east of, uh, or excuse me, west of Kanakakai. So my, my macro point here coming from Marco here, Jay, is that this is really terra incognita. When you're dealing with such a small and finite grid and the demand or the, 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 the there's the movement and the strong motivation and impetus to put more and more solar and reduce the consumption of, of, of renewable, excuse me, of petroleum energy, especially on that island, is that having all the pieces fit and fit so that they work harmoniously with each other and fit so that there aren't hiccups and fit so that you don't have too much power and fit so that you have enough stored power when the sun don't shine, all of that is an enormously complicated jigsaw puzzle to get right. So I have some and questions I, I have, about that. I mean, yes. so if you go to uh, Kauai, um, you see actually there's, there's two, 
There's two solar and battery facilities. Uh, one of them is Tesla, and uh, it was the first one. Uh, the other one is AES, by the way. Um, yes. And uh, the, the Tesla facility is uh, the same, it has the same look as the slide you just showed us. It's like a, a shipping container. And, and one side of the shipping container opens up and presto, there's all these racks of batteries in there. So the actual right. batteries are small, like a, uh, like a, uh, a small desktop computer. Uh, they're, not, they're not that big. And you can see them all when you open the, the steel doors. <clears throat> and and th this, uh, these, it's a series, it's probably, uh, my recollection, maybe half a dozen of these uh, big, um, you know, uh, container size units. But down, down the hill, okay, is this huge, and I mean huge, the biggest one I've ever seen, um, you know, solar facility with all the solar cells and racks and, and what have you, uh, huge. And <clears throat> this, this facility, uh, the storage facility, slightly up the hill, um, manages to save uh, about eight hours, as I recall, uh, of, of the energy that's generated um, by all these solar cells. I, what, what I heard you describe, however, it sounds to me like the Tesla facility may be further advanced, more intelligent in Molokai, um, and it, it, it not only covers, you know, one uh, field, one uh, solar farm, but other sources as well, and so they all feed into this uh, Tesla system, and then Tesla is able to store and balance. And I wonder where the brain is for that, that's one question, and I wonder how much, how many hours of energy can it store for the entire system on Molokai? Well, I think a small correction here, as far as I understand, this, this Megapack battery which effectively is the aggregation of a bunch of Tesla power packs is what you saw there on Kauai. They decided to aggregate them, you know, by 20x or 30x or however many x and then called them a mega pack. But I mean, it's essentially one and the same type of technology and design. But that battery storage is only, as I understand it, going to be paired with this new 7.5 megawatt solar array that MNEP, uh, Mokai New Energy Partners, will be installing. It's not going to be a battery for the whole Molokai grid per se, but it'll be specifically attached to and paired with and work in tandem with the new solar array, the utility scale solar array that will be going in next year. So when you talk about the brain, I mean, you've got this uh, separate project and system where you have the new solar array and the new battery pack, and that's feeding into the MECO grid. Now, the brain of making all the pieces fit with the existing uh, uh, combustion generation from the MECO power plant with the new utility scale solar plus storage with the hundreds of existing rooftop solar systems that are already feeding into the MECO grid, and then add into that the CBRE project to 250 kilowatts. That's where the brains of the control room men and women have to come in as they're looking at screens on a 24 hour a day basis making sure that the grid stays stable making sure that there's not too much power being generated at any any given time so when you say the brains you know to what extent computers are doing this aided by human beings or the other way around i'm not in a capacity to say but there's obviously a lot of cooperation that necessarily has to take place between the grid operators actual people and then all the equipment and the pieces of the puzzle that they're keeping an eye on second by second, hour by hour, day by day, making sure that the lights stay on and the grid stays stable. And that all happens in the, uh, in the control room center near Kanaka Kai, right? The ones Correct. that I did see. Correct. <clears throat> and, where, and where is this uh, big uh, solar farm going to be located? The one you're talking right about? By the, right by the Palaau, I believe it's pronounced. Uh, right by the Miko power plant. It's going to be a spinning distance of the Miko well, power plant. It's in the same area and then. It's, it's all in the same area. Yeah, yes, not, not far. It's going to be on land, land that's owned by Molokai Ranch, which is, I believe, the largest private landowner of mm -hmm. 22,000, I think, acres on that island. And they will be uh, doing a long-term lease with the Molokai New Energy Partner folks. So, you know, there, was, uh, there always is some pushback from the community, and Molokai is no stranger to that. How does the community feel about this? I mean, you talk about presenting these slides and um, the, you know presenting this project 
What kind of reaction? Is everybody cool with this? Well, I think everybody cool with the J is, is too high a bar, but I think <laughs> from what I gather, uh, the large majority are cool with it. I mean, certainly uh, no comparison to the pushback that the notion or the proposal of putting up dozens of 400 plus foot wind towers along the west end on, on the ranch land was, uh, you know, there was tremendous pushback, rightly so as far as I'm concerned. So in terms of how that island can be, I want to be diplomatic here, can be kind of finicky when it comes to uh, opening its, its loving arms to outside uh, ideas and, uh, and, and projects. I think overall the response from the community has been quite good and positive. And, and, and you, know, you can imagine what their number one issue is, which is what's it going to do to my electric rates? Are they going to go down? And the reduction in rates, I don't believe, uh, is going to happen immediately or maybe in the short term. But when you're talking about putting in a project that is under a power purchase agreement where the price is fixed at somewhere around 18 cents a kilowatt hour for the next years, that is an enormously positive hedge against the possibility, more like likelihood, of the price of petroleum continuing to go up which affects, of course, uh, the amount of money that people are paying on their, their, their MECO bills. So uh, I believe one can legitimately and honestly make the case that projects like this where you've got a fixed price contract for a renewable energy source for 20 or 30 years will, over time, lead to uh, lower than otherwise expected uh, electric rates that mm -hmm. people are paying for their monthly bill. You know, one thing that uh, came up uh, in the course of discussion on Molokai, uh, as far as I was involved, was the notion that the community had some expectation um, that they would be a, a part owner uh, or have some sort of a part interest uh, in this project. Um, and at, at the very least, they would have some level of control over the management of the project. Uh, where is that now? Did that happen or not? Uh, in, in terms of ownership, I know of no plans that would that essentially would offer shares of this project. I don't believe that that's in the works. I mean, it's conceivable. If I remember the, the discussions of earlier on, a number of years ago, is that uh, once the power plant is fully depreciated, which typically happens in, I believe, uh, no less than six years, that once the tax credits are taken fully, once the depreciation has been fully once the facility has been fully depreciated, then it's conceivable that you would have uh, a, a plant like that plus storage, which would have a fair market value of X, the X to be determined, you know, in the course of negotiations. So it's conceivable that the project owner, in this case, Mullick New Energy Partners, would be open to a hui of local interested mm -hmm. parties yeah. who would come up with X number of million bucks and say, we would like to own this outright. Yeah. But, you know, th that, that takes a, quite a bit of effort and energy, not to mention money. So, you know, that, that remains to be seen. But I don't see any change of ownership okay. possible and at least the first, until the first six years play out. So how far along are we when this project is finished? And how, how much has, will then yet have to be done? And is there any plan to do it? Well, I believe the plan is breaking ground either by the end of this year or early next year. Uh, according to their presentation last week, uh, they were projecting a completion of sometime July of 2020. Uh, I think, uh, you know, it's entirely possible that that could be pushed out of ways. I mean, I, I've done work on that island over the years, and I uh, fully realize how challenging it can be from a manpower, people power, logistics perspective. So. Uh, I think having it done and, uh, you know, actually producing power by some time the second half of last year, or last year, that's going back in the past, the second half of next year uh, is entirely possible. So to answer your question, I would foresee this plant being fully online sometime in the third or fourth quarter of next year. And what follows? Are there projects in the pipeline? Uh, what, uh, two other things that follow, as I mentioned before, the CBRE, Community-Based Renewable Energy, which uh, kind of to go back to one of your points earlier, which does have the opportunity for essentially fractional ownership uh, by the community in terms of being able to, that was the whole notion behind C 
CBREs to allow those people who don't have their own, you know, juicy uh, roof and their single family dwelling to put solar that they can be a participant of a community based solar project. So mm -hmm. that 250 kilowatt project will hopefully be going in next year as well. And then you've got this new RFP, which was recently issued, which is specifically asking for proposed projects of uh, renewable energy plus storage for all of the five islands that Hawaiian Electric companies cover, including Mika, including Maui, oh. Maui, Molokai, Lanai. Yeah, that's Big in Island play right Hawaii. now. That's in play right now. Hawaiian Electric was on the show and talked about right. that. Marco, we've got to go now. I'm so sorry we've got to go because we've only scratched the surface on this. I hope we can discuss more of it. I hope we can talk about the status of, um, of energy on Lanai, which was, uh, you know, uh, a very controversial for a long time, and I don't know where it went. Um, but I, I yeah. think you can help us understand that on a later show. Um, anyway, Marco, thank you so much. We've had uh, Macro, Marco, and Micro today on Molokai. That's four uh, M's. It's been a four M show. Thank you so much, Marco. You're very welcome. And just a little teaser. I hope to have uh, our friend, my friend, Mary Powell, uh, in two weeks. Mary Powell is the CEO of a fantastic company in Vermont called Green Mountain power and uh, she's just a super phenomenal person and i really look forward to her sharing what her experiences in in the utility realm and being on the cutting edge there at the opposite end of the country of where we are jay but you're fantastic and uh thank you so much for having me thank you marco aloha till next time you rock thank you